On this channel, you have learned a lot about new tech in the worship space that Jake has implemented into his worship ministry. But haven't you ever wondered what's going on at other churches who have entirely different tech setups and unique circumstances? In this new series that I'm creatively coining Worship Tech Tour, we are going to be diving into tech setups at different churches in order to highlight the distinctiveness and similarities between each. To learn more about implementing the latest tech in your worship ministry, check out worshiptechschool.com where you'll find online courses to help you implement the best tools for audio, lighting, video, and more at your church. Visit worshiptechschool.com or click the link in the description to learn more. Let's get into the tech tour. For this first episode, Jake and I visited Andrew Leppard, who's the director of digital media at Lighthouse Church. Lighthouse started renting an old building years ago when their church was just getting started. And as with any buildings that were not designed with modern tech in mind, I mean, how could they have been? It is fascinating to see all the technology that they have implemented to make their tech setup incredible. Jake has been to Lighthouse before, when this channel was just getting started, and other than that video being terrible, the difference from Lighthouse's setup then to now is pretty inspiring. But without further ado, let's walk through each section of their tech setup with audio, lighting, video display, and cameras with Andrew, starting with how he managed to get a good acoustic design in such an old and tall building. Welcome to Lighthouse Church. Yeah, so for the acoustic design of this room, uh, when we got here, it was incredibly echoey. It's a super tall A-frame, and so it was designed for a choir to be up in the balcony and for it to all go down, which means it kind of worked backwards also and just bounced back and forth. So over the course of the first six months to a year of being here, we realized we really need to do something about the echo. And so there, if you notice, there's these black panels all the way around the room. Um, they're literally, I'm pretty sure they're like two by fours with sound insulation from Home Depot in them um, with just like black felt over it. Um, but they work relatively good for how much they cost. And we just figured we could throw a bunch at the room and it would kind of calm it down a little bit. And it has. Uh, the other thing that we do for sound is making sure that we have cha enough chairs in the room um, because the chairs also have padding in the seats and everything. And so that will really cut down on it significantly. For our speakers, we have the IQ12s up top, and then we have four Milan M10s under the stage for Phil at the front. And then we have two more Milan M10s uh, about halfway in the room to get uh, further back Phil. And then for our subs, we have four, I believe they're IQ18 or something like that by TurboSound um, subwoofers. We have the Behringer X32 board here. Um, and then on the stage, we have two more X32 racks that are linked together. And then all the stage gets plugged into those. And that allows us to have 32 channels on the stage that can be completely independent for in-ears. And then we have an ethernet cable running from the stage back to this board that gives me completely separate um, EQs, compression, gain, everything and that allows us to have complete control of the room without affecting in-ears. For in-ear monitors, the entire band is set up with the Shure PSM300 wireless in-ear system. And other than having to deal with a little bit of line of sight issues from the transmitter to the wireless packs, the system works really well. As far as microphones go, the entire band uses the Shure Beta 87As and they're wireless, so they just send their signal directly into the receivers in the stage box. The only exception to this is the lead microphone that Lighthouse uses. It's a wired Beta 87A, which they use just as backup, just in case their wireless system goes down, they're guaranteed to have at least one working microphone. They've also got set up some Audio-Technica 5-inch shotgun mics for crowd miking. These little guys are pointed directly at the crowd, and they're mainly used for live recordings of worship sets, but it's also great because every one of the band members can send a little bit of the crowd mic signal to their ears so they get a little more more room feel. For monitoring at the back of house, there is a pair of KRK Rocket 5s. The main mix is set up so that the room gets quite noticeably quieter as it goes back towards back of house. So 
They have these Rocky 5 set up so that whoever is mixing can get an accurate view of what the mix sounds like to the majority of the congregation. And because of the position of the tech booth, it's actually a low point in the room. So they have a sub underneath again to get a more accurate representation of the front of house mix. One of the cool things that Andrew has done with the mix is he set up a 31 band graphic EQ. So he actually went around the room and manually tuned for frequencies that sound good in certain places in the room. I guess sometimes that's what it takes to become the director of digital media at your church. And finally, Andrew set up some effects in the mix. So they have a long reverb that is timed to the length of the room. They have another short reverb, and then they also have a tap delay for vocals so that they can tap and time the delay to the song. So that pretty much covers monitoring, but when it comes to live sound, let's dive into the track system and the multi-track recording system that Lighthouse uses. So for tracks, we use uh, Ableton, and we just have a laptop on stage that the drummer controls. Um, and we have eight channels running to the board. Uh, two are dedicated to click and guide, and then the other six we actually have routed as DCAs so that on the right side of the board, I have all of my, I have my main band DCA, I have the Mac PC computer, and then I have my six um, track lines. We definitely do multi-track recording. Um, the way we do it is we have a card in the back of the board where we plug in just SD cards and it records all 32 tracks. For pastor sermon, we have typically three steps of redundancy. So we have just a flash drive in the top of the board that we record for that. And that's the one that we use most often just because it's easiest. We also have um, a line running from the board to the camera. And so the camera has a built-in backup when it's recording. And then most Sundays, we also are always doing a 32 channel live recording on the SD cards, and so we also have that as a backup. Arguably, the coolest part about Lighthouse's whole tech setup is their screen. They got a custom 235 screen from Carl's Place, which is a website that specializes in custom screens. It's actually what we use at Mission Lakewood, and it's a really, really great screen and really budget friendly. But their custom screen is massive, so you're probably wondering what kind of projector they use to display such a large image. They use an ultra short throw laser projector by Epsom. It's a rear projection projector, and it only has eight feet of throw. So it is super high quality color, there is no pixelation, and it only sits eight feet behind the screen. It's absolutely incredible. And then quite less impressive, but just as important is the confidence monitor. Andrew described it to me as being just a 40 inch TV, and that's a pretty good definition of it because it is just a 40 inch TV that sits on the front row. And this high tech TV gets its signal from a HDMI splitter that just sits in the tech booth behind their computer running Proclaim. But that's it for the displays. Let's hear a little more about the software they use Proclaim. For presentation, we have a program called Proclaim, um, which when we started was just cheap, and so that's why we used it. But now, uh, over the past few years, it's really growing and developing into a program that we actually enjoy and love using. Um, and the, the team has actually been really good to us. Uh, we had a, a, an idea a few months ago about something we could do with it that, that they'd never done before, and they had a team working on it for a week in their lab just trying to figure out if they could fix it for us or whatever, and so um, we've really enjoyed using it. It's, it's manually done um, with just the person here with the keyboard and mouse um, just watching the room. Um, we have a few things automated, um, mainly just the start of service countdown, um, and then, yeah, I think that's actually it for automation. That may be it for Ableton automation, but all of the lighting scenes and lighting changes are actually automated through Proclaim's MIDI functionality. Lighthouse uses LightKey for their lighting software, which means that they're doing something right because it's the same software that Jake and I use at our church. It's a super, super easy software to use and from their computer in the tech booth, they can control all of their lights with just a click. And they have a lot of different options when it comes to controlling their lights with LightKey because of how many lights they have set up in the 
room. They have light bars that go along the side leading up to the stage, and on stage they have several different movers. They have pars that offer a lot of different options for colored fill lights. Then they also have amber lights that they specifically use for the sermon. So their lighting system is pretty epic. Again, it is all automated with Proclaim, all of their lighting changes, and it's programmed by their worship leader week in and week out specifically for each worship set. And because of the versatility of LightKey and just the amount of lights that they have, they can achieve a pretty serious diversity of different moods and feelings within each worship set. And finally, the last little piece of Lighthouse's light system is their Hazer. They use the Hurricane Haze 4D, and they really only use this as a way to differentiate for special Sundays or special services like worship nights or really significant Sundays like Easter. But that pretty much covers it for their lighting setup. Let's move on to the cameras. So our full camera setup is we have this Sony camera that is just in the back, that's just a wide shot of the room so that during worship nights and everything, uh, we have shots of the crowd being interactive. And then we also have a camera by the drum set that points at the drums and the drummer so that we can have up close shots of that. In the back up here mounted, we have a Sony A7 series camera that has a, a really short HDMI cable just to this Atomos recorder. Um, and the best thing about that is we can just plug an SSD directly into the back um, just like a standard 2.5 inch SSD. And that'll give us four and a half hours of recording time um, at ProRes 422. And it gives us tons of flexibility in editing and also um, record time, no time limits because the Sony cameras have the 30 minute time limit. Although Lighthouse has a pretty awesome camera setup, they do not actually do any live streaming because of the camera time limitations that come along with the Sony A7s. And although Lighthouse does not live stream, the coolest thing about their camera setup is their back camera. And because it is externally recording, they actually send that feed to an ethernet sender, which then sends the feed off to a splitter, which then sends two different feeds, one going to the cry room and one going to the green room so that the babies and the band can have a live view of what is happening during the sermon. So the setup we have running here is an iMac Pro that has like an eight core processor and a Vega 56 and some crazy specs. Um, and then we have Proclaim running on it. We have Light Key running on it. And then we just have a, a Chrome window open with just Google Voice so that our kids ministry can uh, just text us a code if a kid needs to be picked up and we can just plug it into Proclaim and pop it up on the screen. Uh, the reason why we have an iMac Pro is because um, we were previously planning on doing um, video services and editing it all on this computer, um, but we've since changed that concept, but we're also still gonna just use it in the future for video, video editing projects, and as we hire more people, this will be their dedicated um, you know, editing workstation. We just have this uh, Scarlett 2i2 here just to get clean audio from the computer to the board um, because we were running into some issues with um, just popping and stuff. So we wanted to have a, a really quality setup there. And that is gonna wrap up this worship tech tour. Wasn't that a lot of fun, you guys? I sure had a lot of fun. Thank you, Andrew, for letting us come to Lighthouse and take a look at your tech setup. If you guys are interested in learning more about implementing the latest tech in your worship ministry, I want to invite you to check out worshiptechschool.com. You're gonna find online courses to help you implement the best tools for audio, lighting, video, and more at your church. All of the tech that you saw in this video, you're gonna be able to learn more about how to implement it in your own ministry. It's really cool, it's super cool. So, if you're interested, visit worshiptechschool.com or click the link in the description to learn more. That's it for this tour. There will be more in the future. Thanks so much for watching.